um, thank you, Andy, for asking me. And um, last time I was here, um, I I told you about the very special place near where I live, ten miles from there, ten miles south, um, high up, um, in between the fells, um, and it's not on the map. And it's an area of um, eroded um, blanket fog. And it had been um, studied intensively by scientists since at least the 1950s um, because it dates back to the Ice Age. And scientists are able to um, form a kind of diary of everything that has happened climatically um, since then in the peat by taking samples and um, recording all the processes that are happening on the surface of the bog. And um, what has happened is that it had been seriously eroded um, by various factors, um, weather and human activity or whatever, um, but it is naturally Repopulating itself with um, natural um, of vegetation and peat. Um, the peat forms very, very slowly at the rate of only a millimeter per year. Um, and all around this area, which is the size of football pitch roughly, um, are what are known as um, peat hacks. And um, they are where the the peak had been eroded and um, exposed, but the, um, the structure of the peak had remained in these um, mounds that have a very strong presence. Um, and a few years ago, um, I collaborated with my friend Laura Harrington, the artist um, who produced this artist book um, with various contributions from scientists, artists, um, botanist, um, and also I, I contributed to the sequence of poems. Um, sadly, this is the only copy I have, um, that there are no more copies available, but if anyone would be interested to read the whole book, um, I do have a PDF which I can email to anybody if they're interested. So um, last time I showed you, um, three birch and twigs, um, which date back to the time 7,000 years ago when um, moss collapse was um, below the tree line and therefore um, trees grew there, especially silver birch. And these uh, birch twigs are scattered all over the surface. Um, and they are amazingly fresh. Um, the bark is beautiful and intricately detailed, and it looks as if it's fallen from the tree yesterday. So, um, but all the time, um, processes are happening um, on this area of blanket um, bark, um, and slowly the vegetation is growing back. So I thought we would return there um, this time. And I'm introducing um, a very short recording of part of my reading, which is not from Moss Flats itself, I'm afraid, but um, from as near as I um, can manage, which is um, just outside my home in Gallagher. So, um, the spirit of Moss Flats. Searching for his lost heart, Vainamoinen came across Moss Flats and heard the weeping of the scattered sacred birch trees. He asked them why they wept. They had been ill-treated 
and dishonored they sang. By rain, wind, human fire, and grazing, running water and frost, which had blown away, cracked, eroded, and washed away the precious treasure in their keeping. Worldwide, they sang, up to 450 billion tons of carbon are held locked in peat box, twice as much as in all the living forests of the world. The reason? Peat box pluck the carbon out of the air with their living plants, then submerge it, trap it, so long as they are not plundered for burning, or eroded by weather and grazing. They need four things to function and flourish. Water, coolness, to be unfrozen, to be left intact. Here is the drama. Here on moss flats. Then Vainamoinen picked up three birchen twigs to make a cantilever, strung it with quivering tresses of cotton grass, and sang. This is a sacred treasure house, and so it is all over the earth. A carbon with its four valences, symbol of reality, the four dimensions of the totality of existence. And on this stage, we cast the seed of song of the cotton grass to rein in the raging of human fire to find the sun code, the fullness of possession, the fullness of functioning of the carbon sink by the time of the 2216 alignment of Earth with the archer Arotep. After Mithras captured the bull, it escaped. The sun sent a raven to Mithras, commanding him to kill the bull. Mithras pursued the bull with his dog. He loved that bull. And yet, he obeyed. From the bull's body, instead of blood, then sphagnum moss, heather, cotton grass, beer grass, cloudberry, and all the useful herbs and plants of the earth. From the spinal cord sprang wheat. <coughs> From the blood, the vine. Then the seed of the bowl, gathered and purified by the moon, generated the species of all domestic animals. And the bowl soul and the protection of Mithra's dog ascended into the sky, where he became guardian of all the herds. A new world came into being. The southwest wind moans on the top. Far off ruffles the reservoir. The space waits to breathe in. 
only after the words of Phanomorimon had scattered like seeds, and the quivering sisma of his cotton grass cantile died to silence, did I see the flickering flame advance across the bare peak, a mauve purple flash unleashed on the bare hot tooth.